Hi guys, Artie here, and we're going to be talking about an interesting subject and trope related to television, that being channel drift and decay. To sum it up, channel drift means when a channel strays away from its original concept or purpose in order to boost ratings or pander to a certain demographic. It's been more prevalent these days due to the ever-changing media landscape and overall greed and incompetence. So let's start off the list with number 5, that being the History Channel. Probably the most obvious example on this list. The network once known for detailed history documentaries throughout millennia such as the Roman Empire, the Cold War, and especially World War II, now reduced to shows about pawn shops and aliens. What went wrong? Not many people know, but the initial reason why the History Channel stopped being about history is due to their contract with the Smithsonian Institution since the early days of the channel ended, in favor of an exclusive deal with Showtime. So History had to look for other options of what they air throughout the day, with the easiest programs to produce and syndicate being documentary-style reality shows and soaps such as the infamous Pawn Stars, Ancient Aliens, and Ice Road Truckers. The other factor was History launching secondary channels such as H2 and Military History, focusing only on history so that the main channel could just air whatever. H2, originally known as History International, later rebranded to Viceland in 2016, leaving Military History as the only true history network left. Though you could consider the digital subchannel story television as a spiritual successor to history's glory days. Since the 2010s, History Channel has been the laughingstock of television for not being factual about history and instead producing shows about conspiracy theories and pure speculation. In fact, it can be misleading if you're dumb enough to fall for it. The South Park episode, A History Channel Thanksgiving, sums it up perfectly and it's hilarious. Number 4, G4 TV. Fun fact, the channel space originally began as ZDTV in 1998, but rebranded to Tech TV in 2000. A channel presenting shows and relevant news all about technology, but more specifically about computers and the internet, but not really console gaming. G4 later launched in 2002 and honed in on gaming content, but eventually merged with Tech TV in 2004 as G4 Tech TV, and G4 took over the entire channel dropping the Tech TV brand by 2005. G4 stuck with gaming, tech, and entertainment programming such as Attack of the Show, X-Play, and Arena for most of its run, with the occasional adult animation attempts like Happy Tree Friends and Code Monkeys, but skewed towards general male-oriented programming such as reruns of Cops, Cheaters, and Japanese game shows such as Ninja Warrior in the late 2000s, until the channel's demise in order to boost their poor ratings. This was amplified during the channel's final years, where nearly all of its original programming was cancelled and consisted of only reruns, until G4 shut down at the end of 2014 with the Canadian counterpart surviving all the way until 2017. G4 TV made a grand return in 2021, however it was very short-lived and lasted little over a year. This time around, they strictly stuck with shows only about gaming and entertainment, such as the revivals of Attack of the Show and X-Play. Hell, they even managed to adapt Scott the Waz videos into a TV show format. There was a slew of reasons why the G4 revival failed, such as cord cutting and general incompetence, which I already discussed in the very first video I uploaded on my channel. It's very rough, so I'll probably remake it in the future. G4 TV officially stopped playing on November 18th, 2022. On another note, unlike G4, Tech TV was available in various international markets, including the UK and Southeast Asian countries such as Malaysia, but sadly was discontinued when Tech TV went defunct, rather than rebranding the G4. However, some G4 programming like Attack of the Show aired on its sister channel Sci-Fi in some territories. I guess G4 stopped playing for real this time unless they come back on October 4th, 2029. Try to figure out in the comments how I pulled that date out of my ass. Winner gets a free shoutout! Number 3, TLC, formerly known as The Learning Channel. Before it was entirely composed of gross-out reality shows like Hoarders, My 600 Pound Life, and Honey Boo Boo, it was actually all educational programming. Educational programming. That's me. I'm just kidding. Starting from its debut in 1980, TLC aired documentaries, edutainment shows, and covered a variety of subjects from history to health and science. They even had a few PBS shows like The Magic School Bus airing at one point on the Ready, Set, Learn block. Starting in the 2000s, they began drifting into reality shows. Due to how successful they were, TLC transformed into a full-fledged reality channel by the 2010s. More specifically, reality shows and documentaries about lifestyle and personal life experiences were the only programs featured on the network. If you ever just wanted to make yourself cringe or lose your appetite, all you have to do is tune into TLC. There's no sign of it stopping. In fact, it just keeps growing in popularity. I always see clips of hoarders and extreme cheapskates being uploaded onto YouTube. Although, to be fair, these are some of the more tolerable and somewhat enjoyable shows compared to the disgusting and borderline creepy shows like Toddlers and Tiaras. 
it's not looking good for TLC. Number 2, The Weather Channel, or should I say, The Reality Channel. Wow, multiple networks on this list have reached rock bottom and resorted to reality or documentary shows. Just because a show takes place in the great outdoors, or is loosely related to the weather, doesn't mean it belongs on the Weather Channel. I'm telling that to you highway through hell. We need more excellent shows about Mother Nature and natural disasters, such as Storm Stories and my personal favorite, So You Think You'd Survive. TWC still presents live weather coverage 17 hours a day on weekdays and 13 hours on weekends, but the problem is that the primetime and overnight slots are filled with too much reality garbage, rather than shows and documentaries about weather or natural disasters. Maybe they should show some movies like Twister. The Weather Channel used to have sister channel WeatherScan that featured non-stop in-depth local forecasts all the time, but was slowly dropped from cable providers starting in 2017 and discontinued altogether by late 2022. Fortunately, there is a website under the name weatherscan.net that emulates the weatherscan experience run by TWC fans. The main factors contributing to the Weather Channel's downfall is that we live in the future and can just check the weather on our phones at any time, rather than waiting for the local on the 8s to see the local forecast with a side of some smooth jazz, as the narrator warns us of a severe weather outbreak. The other reason is that nowadays there are more competitors such as Weather Nation, AccuWeather, and Fox Weather. Thankfully, rural communities and farmers keep the channel alive. No wonder they have so many ads for Tractor Supply and L.L. Bean. Also, to be entirely fair, they've had some good ideas lately such as Retro 8. Hopefully it comes back soon. I'll also give it the benefit of the doubt that TWC's reality programming isn't too far off from weather nature, and most of the day is still only about weather. Fun fact, TWC was a sister channel to G4 TV at one point due to various changes of ownership throughout the years. For honorable mention number one, I will briefly address the CN Real block that ran from 2008 until 2010, when the Cartoon Network Renaissance began and they picked back up again with hits such as Regular Show. The reason why I didn't include it on this list is that pretty much everyone already knows about it, and the other reason is that it didn't take over the entire channel and was relegated to primetime hours one day out of the week. It wasn't as bad as people remember it to be. By 2014, all live action content faded from the channel and they began to focus purely on animation once again. Nearly all the live action shows were terrible except for Destroy Build Destroy, Dude What Would Happen, and Hole in the Wall, which were halfway decent. But still, they did not belong on Cartoon Network. If they aired on, say like, the Hub or Discovery Channel, it would have garnered much less hate. Also something to note is that Cartoon Network tends to go through phases where it will go bad and then pick back up again better than ever. Meanwhile, Nickelodeon has been consistently bad since the 2009 rebrand. For honorable mention number two, we have the Travel Channel. I guess you weren't expecting to see this one. Travel Channel used to air programs about people traveling all across the globe to try local delicacies and shows related to leisure and exactly what it says on the tin. Take a wild guess at what direction the Travel Channel decided to go in. If you guessed ghost hunting and paranormal activity shows, then you are correct. This example baffles me the most. Alright, I can see TLC and History Channel drifting the reality since it's most obvious, but ghost shows are oddly specific and aren't even remotely related to traveling. I don't get it. Maybe it's because I don't believe in ghosts, but it's whatever I guess. For our third and final honorable mention, we have Boomerang from Cartoon Network. When the channel rebranded in 2015, all classic shows were either reduced to graveyard slots or pulled from the network entirely, in favor of reruns of currently running Cartoon Network shows and lousy imports that were too tacky for the main channel. The reason why I excluded Boomerang from the list is because thanks to a change in leadership not too long ago, the channel returned to its original goal of showcasing classic cartoons 24 hours a day. My only issues are that there needs to be at least a few CN originals airing that aren't part of Checker Past, and that the channel's in desperate need of a rebrand. They have been airing the same bumpers and promos for nearly a decade now, and it has that god-awful flat and boring corporate art style. Pretty much a theme opposite to a throwback channel, as a reference, Cartoon Network was still using Check It 3.0 bumpers when Boomerang rebranded in 2015. Boomerang is due for a facelift. It's only a matter of when, rather than if. Oh, and one more thing. Boomerang's coverage and availability is very spotty, and is often only on the rich people cable tiers. For unknown reasons, and most likely due to NBC Universal having beef with Warner Brothers, Comcast Xfinity outright refuses to carry Boomerang. New England stopped carrying it sometime in 2010, Meanwhile, the rest of the country lost Boomerang on Comcast in March 2016. And for the number one channel that went through the worst channel drift is MTV. You all saw this coming and it is one of the most infamous examples in US television history. 
As you all already may know, MTV originally stood for music television and was dedicated to music-related programming such as music videos, playlists, and talk shows all around the clock for the first few decades, with some adult animation in between such as Beavis and Butthead, Daria, Liquid Television, and Clone High. With the rise of services like YouTube, Pandora, iHeartRadio, Spotify, iTunes, and even music becoming more accessible through MP3 players, and the music choice channels nobody watches all leading to MTV's fall from grace. This led to MTV investing more and more into reality shows until it took over the channel completely. Also, am I the only one who remembers when MTV went through an identity crisis in 2016 and was airing Spongebob, South Park, and Ren and Stippy out of nowhere? MTV is a television equivalent of having that one bad drug trip or mental breakdown that you never come back from. These days, MTV is basically a 24-hour loop of never-ending ridiculousness, with some movies sandwiched in between and the occasional new episode of Teen Mom or Catfish. If you are expecting music from MTV, your only options are its sister channels MTV Classic, MTV Live, and MTV U. If you were wondering about MTV2, nowadays it basically serves as an overflow channel for all the other Viacom networks. All I've seen them really air is Tosh.0 and Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Oh yeah, they did briefly air Spongebob back in summer 2021. It's sad that the channel that was initially known for celebrating all genres of music and showcasing experimental and ingenious adult animated shows for the first few decades was reduced to shows that promote failures in high school dropouts and eventually devolved into ridiculousness, quite literally. MTV defined cable when it was taking off in the 80s and 90s and was a tool that helped creators grow and express themselves that changed the landscape of TV forever. As traditional cable TV struggles to stay afloat in the age of cord cutting, streaming, and video sharing sites, Channels had to find alternative ways to survive and remain profitable, whether that be spamming endless marathons of the same shows all day every day, or straying away from the channel's original concept to pander to a more broad demographic. Now that cable is hitting rock bottom, companies have given up and there's been lots of experimentation, for better or for worse. That's why Cartoon Network and Boomerang went back to their roots. Who knows, cable might be on the road to death, or it could make a resurgence, especially with how mismanaged streaming platforms are these days. Who knows, honestly? Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, notify, and check out other videos on the channel. You may like them. Are there any other channels that also went off the rails that I didn't cover on the list? Let me know in the comments. Also, special thanks to TV Tropes for helping with research for this video, the go to for all their trends, history, and facts about television and media as a whole. Also, you should check out 4GTV on Twitch.